Hi, I'm Matthew Thomas, and this is my grandfather, John Brent Wassell, who was born today, June 28, 1906. And then he started, he did all of his schooling, all of his stuff out in St. Louis, and then he, his first aviation project was selling tickets to um, Charles Lindbergh barnstorming in, um, in St. Louis with, his un with my uncle Ray who was a National Guard, along with Charles Lindbergh. And then we have, and then my grandma turned her first airplane ride down, passed Lindy up. May, uh, his flight was May of 27, and then the pictures were June, a month after, after she turned them down the year before, in 26. Okay, and that's Walter Beach with Beach Aircrafts, the Beach Aircrafts, and he's on the right next to Walter Beach in the white suit but that and then the plane on the right that was um the first plane he um he designed built and flew that was the first plane he did you know jack had a lot of accomplishments with beach aircraft lockheed and other companies and in spite of all his acknowledgments of his career and the path that took him down he was very humble I mean, he spoke about some of his experiences, but it was never in a way of where I did this and I did that. He was just very humble and part of the group. My grandpa was in National Geographic in 1962. For, um, for he was talking about how they were going to be going into space, traveling around the moon. And then they landed on the moon in 1969, seven years later. Woohoo! He was Calix, the Calix director. And then when they were out in the ocean west of Baja, they, um, they saw this island and they designated it to my grandpa. They listed it and gave him, and it's called Wassel's Island. And there's three of his buddies up there on the island when they when they gave it to him. And the boat they traveled in was called Misty from Los Angeles and then Wassel's Island. This was a book he designed for the P2V Neptune series, Lockheed. And that's one he came up with as well. And see J John B. Wassel. And I was looking through it to see where, where his picture was and I looked on the front and he was the author. I went out with him and his boat and we went fishing together. And he was a good fisherman and, and a skilled boater. And uh, we used to go marlin fishing here in the month of September. That was the best month to go because uh, the water was warmer. Yeah. And he caught one marlin off his boat. Really, we weren't very far off the Newport jetty. And this was a picture of my grandpa in 1967, and he caught a marlin. And then you can show the, he, we saw the fishing pole over there. But these are the marlins, and then that's him in 79. Oh no, that's him on the gazebo out by the Balboa Pier. He designed, he, and he helped build and design. And then here's my mom and him when they came down, when they used to rent down here before they bought this house, when they caught fish together. And there's Grandpa at the end of the pier with two more fish he'd caught. This was his vacation home. Woo-wee! Yeah, there's, that was our dock in the, I, I think it was in the 40s or before we had bought it when it used to be a public thing, you know. These are the actual letters from the 1950s sent to my grandfather from the first commercial airmail flights of various aircrafts, including the Lockheed Prop Jet Electra and several others. That was a letter from one of my grandpa's airplanes. And then um, for, the, um, for the first class airmail that he used to do. He got along well with everybody and uh, he had a lot of important positions with Lockheed and uh, with the Skunk Works and uh, with other companies. So he had the reputation of being 
a brilliant engineer, and he uh, helped the United States government in their engineering defense efforts. And then there is Grandpa when he was in aviation in, um, I think that was with Vega, when he was in charge of 70 people. And then um, there he, then he went to um, Lockheed and became in charge of 4,300 people. And then there's um, my, my uncle Ray and Charles Lindbergh in St. Louis when they used to be, when they used to barnstorm. This was one of the first planes my grandpa designed. It was, um, it was May 1929, JBW, John Brent Wassell, and it's an ashtray, even though I didn't smoke as far as I know. When Amelia Earhart went down without any um, knowledge of where she was, my grandpa made this plane for her. When, let's see, is it, can you see it right there? Travel Air. Travel Air Miss, Miss, Mystery and World's Record 1929. That was Amelia Earhart's plane. That's his first helicopter ride over um, Balboa, California. Once Balboa, famed Balboa, found the great Pacific shore. Pacific, his Pacific Ocean has a different and terrific motion. This was Grandpa at the, um, at the Slapsy Maxis with the friends of his back in the day, back in the 40s or 50s. Woohoo! And then this was Club Zerap, Zerap, and that was on Sunset Boulevard. There was Grandpa with some cool cats too. And this is an interesting one yes, there. yes, yes. This was Lakeside um, Golf Course that they were part of. And John Wayne was a member at the same time as Grandpa, Del Webb, and Johnny Westmuller, who played the great Tarzan. And there's my Grandpa in the parade that he helped um, for um, Newport uh, for the um, Fourth of July. And then go to Dillman, yeah. And then there's Dillman's, the old restaurant. They used to be on the corner of, um, on the corner by the pier, and they were thanking him for all his work, Jack Wassell. He was a good host at parties we had in the neighborhood. He was the life of the party. Had a good sense of humor, and never offended anybody. He was uh, kept the conversation going. And he was a very interesting guy with all his uh, wartime experiences with the Navy. And uh, he was a good storyteller. This is my grandpa's obituary. This was his aviation pioneer, how he went through, how he started here. And then he was 73 and then all the different um, planes he came up with and how he started it. It describes everything about from, from the um, Charles Lindbergh selling tickets to the Walter Beach with beach aircrafts to Vega and then off to Lockheed and then his island and then, um, then his retirement. And so it's beautiful. And then his passing away. Well, when Jack Wassell died, he wanted to be, have his ashes taken out to sea. And he was a very meticulous person. And he wanted to make sure he did everything according to the law. And he uh, told his wife that uh, he wanted Bob to take his ashes out in his boat. And I did, and he said, I know he'll make sure that he's three miles offshore like you're supposed to be when you do that. It was a nice, calm, sunny day. The water was flat, and we took his ashes out to sea. And Matthew put his ashes 
over the side when we got three miles out. And Matthew's mom told the story the next week that when Matthew went to kindergarten, he told the kids in the kindergarten class that he uh, took his grandpa's ashes out to sea and that he could hear the bones rattling in the box when they put the ashes over the side. His mom was a little embarrassed with that conversation, but I'm sure those kindergarten kids got a kick out of it. My grandpa had just bought a house in North Hollywood on Placidia, and his neighbor was the artist for Gone with the Wind. There's my mom looking at the picture in 1942, and here's my mom looking at the picture in 2016. That was when my mom was with St. Charles, and she did, Bob Hope let them use their house for a um, little um, fundraiser party. My mom was always very involved with the city of Newport Beach. She hosted a local TV show called Pages of the Past, published a local newspaper called Balboa Beacon. She had vast knowledge of the history of Balboa and Newport Beach because my family has been in the area since 1949. Well, welcome to the year-end wrap-up of, we're going to include pages from the past, timeless treasures, and some city scenes. Goof offers what they were is they were associated with Richard's Market, which is today Vaughn's Market uh, down in Lido Village. And um, this gentleman had the wherewithal to see all these women shopping in his uh, store, and the husbands were sitting out in the cars listening to the radios, and he thought, this is, this is not, I can get these guys in here, but how? So he had a little floor shop in there that wasn't doing that well. So he converted it into a coffee shop, and that's how Goof Offers started. And uh, we're going to talk to, we talked to some of the original uh, Goof Offers, and they just goofed off. How far back does your family go? Well, we landed in Newport Beach in 1949 on a vacation, mm -hmm. and uh, parents purchased a house in 1955, because they just couldn't leave. For, for how much? For $35,000. Yeah, okay. right. yeah. I know. <laughs> <clears throat> On the water. Yeah. That's even better. They probably thought they overpaid for it at the time, too. Oh, they too. did. Yeah. But they'd been saving. And uh, my mom and dad immediately got involved uh, very, you know, a lot in the neighborhood. But the reason they bought it is they, there was a fishing hole just not more than a block from the house. Mm -hmm. There was a Christian's hut, which was great for entertaining, and they could get home real fast, didn't have to drive, and then the fun zone was there for me. There's me and my dad in, in North Hollywood on the um, sleeping together, and that's what he did when he passed away when I saw him last in Moore Park, in Simi Valley Hospital. And then go to, and then there's my dad at, um, one of our friends' um, weddings, this was about eight years after I came out of a coma. And then here's my dad on when he danced on Broadway with Margin Garrett Champion and Harry Belafonte. And then down here is my dad's nickname in, um, in high school. And, um, you know, in junior high, his nickname was Boogie. Woohoo! Go, Daddy! Boogie boy! These were different sets, and I think the middle one is Jim Fitzgerald, the uh, um, director, and then there was other ones. These were on the set of Hollywood Nights, where he was a location producer. That's my father, and he was first. He was in the war, the Korean War, for two years. But he learned to sing and dance, and he learned to sing with um, Paul Salamunovich in the 40s, and then he went to... Um, and he started dancing all in South Central, and then he went to the war. Then when he came back, he went to Broadway with Margin Gary Champ and Harry Belafonte. Instant Maxwell House Coffee presents direct from Broadway, Paul Gregory's 
three for tonight. Starring Marge and Gower champion, Harry Belafonte. Two people who are the very spirits of the dance, Marge and Gower champion. <laughs> Now, break it up. Everybody's welcome at the social. Oh, it's right. auction time. Caught walk down by the brine sea, keeping hands. Evil of sinful man. Said that he would destroy the land. Look to no brother, no stop. Look here, no, build me a off. Won't you build this big and strong? The house is 104 years old. He had bought this in 1955 just as a beach house, you know, from, from away from good old North Hollywood and Burbank and Lockheed and all that different stuff. And then we have, um, I'm just trying to creep up the tradition of the American stuff. So, uh, thank you. Woohoo! Yeah, I'm just blessed that um, I'm able to have this in um, Grandpa's keeping his um keeping his reputation alive because not a lot of people knew about how he was the aviation pioneer this is um all the this my mom's artwork my mom's artwork that's my grandpa that's my mom there's my mom saying I love America the American flag she was very patriotic with all the um the different things so I'm just keeping up her tradition okay peace Okay, the dock it goes way back, and because it was the first one that was down here in the in 1917, and how they have this enclosed, so it was it was built like that to be um, because they used to rent different um, kayaks, different waterboards, paddleboards, all the different things used to be from this dock. So it was cool, and then I have my finch feeder that's empty right now, and. One duck down there that's eating Lucky Cat. <laughs> the hydro bikes, those are, that's what helped me with my rehabilitation for my head trauma.